The Bravo model is produced in only one version with a single body type and five engines, three petrol and two diesel. In choosing its design concept, the success of the more compact Grande Punto, the appearance of which was developed by Tal Design Studio specialists, apparently played a role. As a result, both cars turned out to be very similar, except for the dimensions, but the exterior and interior of the Bravo were already created by the designers of the Fiat Style Center. The designers called the Bravo a classic family car, in keeping with Italian tradition. Compared to the Opel Astra, VW Golf V and Peugeot 307, its length and width are slightly larger. In terms of height and wheelbase, it is slightly inferior to the Peugeot 307, but it stands out sharply in terms of such an important parameter in Russia as ground clearance. While for rivals it is 120 to 130 mm, for Bravo it is 150 mm. For people who fit comfortably enough in the cabin will be able to take three large suitcases on the road, the trunk volume is 400 liters. With the rear seat folded down, the volume of the cargo compartment can be increased to 1175 liters. High quality materials are used for interior trim, while the plastic shapes of various elements of the dashboard are in good harmony with the plastic design of the body as a whole. Angular details are a thing of the past, everything is done solidly. The highlight of the interior equipment is the Blondemel Multifunctional Information Multimedia System. It allows you to turn on the audio system without being distracted from the road, read SMS messages from your phone and make calls, calling the addressee by voice. In technical terms, the car is not distinguished by revolutionary solutions. Front suspension, McPherson type, rear, with trailing arms connected by a torsion transverse beam. Steering, rack and pinion type, with electro-hydraulic booster. Disc brakes on all wheels, tire size, 195-65 or 15. Engines, 1.4, 90 to 150 horsepower. Can you recommend Fiat to your best friend? 10 years ago, the answer would have been yes, if you want to give him trouble. But with the advent of Panda in 2003, this brand has added both in quality and in design, as Bravo, which debuted in early 2007, proves. A little Maserati in front, a little Alfa in the back, this is how thoroughbred Italians should look. However, the premiere of the five-door Bravo was overshadowed by some events, having barely appeared on the market. Hundreds of copies of this model were forced to go to service stations due to the risk of breaking the rear axle. Design flaw? No. Welding mess? This happens, but nothing like this can happen the second time. Cooperation with the negligent supplier ends here. The same thing happened with the badly vulcanized brake hoses that had to be replaced in early 2008. There are almost no complaints from customers, serious shortcomings are rare. It is the 1.9-liter multi-jet diesels that are considered durable. Moreover, a V8 with the capacity of 120 forces is even more than a V16 with 150 forces. True, both were already replaced in 2008 by new V16 diesel engines with a displacement of 1.6 and 2.0 liters with a capacity of 105 to 165 horsepower. But unlike other compacts on Fiat, petrol models are in great demand. They are exclusively 1.4 liter. Moreover, a turbo, T-Jet, with 120 forces is the most popular among them. This is understandable, because Fiat is at odds with lightweight construction. Bravo is a heavy pug at 1,280 kilograms. The obesity of which the rather sluggish 90 HP based petrol engine struggles to cope. At first, the suspension setup was criticized in which they could not find a compromise between sport and comfort. As a result, the Bravo since April 2009 has a smoother spring and softer roll. And in May 2010, Fiat, as part of a light facelift, beefed up the diesel's meager winter heat output with an additional electric heater. In this way, Bravo has become a car that can be recommended without hesitation even to a quickly freezing friend. Detailing on the Bravo is much better than on most previous fights, but it's not always perfect either. Vibrating exterior mirrors, leaking taillights, and water in the trunk are the most common annoyances for owners of this car. The list of flaws continues with worn wheel bearings, creaking clutch pedals, cracked exhaust manifolds on T-Jet engines, and defective EGR valves on 16V diesels. In addition, climate control failures, silent radios, sagging doors, and poor quality paintwork deserve reproach. Most Bravos shine, but some look like they were painted with a roller. Many diesels in the city have problems due to the fact that fuel gets into the engine oil and raises its level above the maximum. 